Hi, um, I'm the school librarian at Walnut Grove Elementary School from K through five. I do technology integration for my teachers as well, so I have a number of roles I play. And being a librarian's not like it was when I was in school. I don't just do story time and reading with the students. I'm actually embedded in the curriculum and I try to help the teachers make sure that they know what kind of resources we have, like PBS Learning Media. And then when they come to me in the library, I'm also using resources to further their curriculum, further their interest. But today people think now that they have access to Google and things are available online, do we really need to know how to use the library anymore? And, and it, it's a valid question because you can do a lot of research without going to the library and get some really good access to information. The problem or the challenge for librarians now to make sure that they're able to reach their students that need to learn um, is how to, how to make use of that information, how to evaluate it, how to know what's reliable, what's not, what's current, what's not, because maybe the information was really reliable 15 years ago. Just because it's on the web doesn't mean it's the most recent information. There's a lot of old stuff there too. The Fund for Teachers Fellowship is going to make a big difference in my teaching. I went there with the goal to become a better technology coach and to learn more about the makerspace movement for the libraries and learn about resources for integrating technology across um, the curriculum. And those were three really big components of ISTE this year, so I, I managed to ac accomplish a lot in those areas. I even have more learning to do as, as I get home. I found out about MOOCs from technology coaching sector and from the maker sector, so I'm really excited to be able to continue connecting with those people that I met at ISTE and, and the great things that they're doing, being able to use that. Well, what makes me a good digital innovator are the same things that drove me to becoming a school librarian and a librarian in general. So I'm very curious. I'm not afraid to try new things. And so I'm always looking at what's available to, in the technology world and education world to make things better for our students. But I'm not uh, just grasping at every new thing. I, I'm very methodical in my approach to what's relevant, how to use it. I'm very sensitive to my teacher's time and the student's time. I mean, it feels like you should have a lot of time with your your students, you've got them for seven hours a day, but, but you've got so many of them and you have to really make sure that you're making that time meaningful and valuable and so much to cover. I think about the ways that technology can enhance, not just be an added layer to what we're doing because that's very important that we're, we're not just asking people to do it for technology's sake, that it's going to actually increase somebody's ability to understand, to show what they understand or to share in some other way what they understand about the resources. Well, my responsibilities as a PBS digital innovator are to help train teachers on how to best use the resources that are available in PBS uh, learning media. We're also going to be sharing with each other across the country. There's a hundred, I'm one of a hundred people that are in, in tasked with this and trying to make sure that teachers and students can access those resources. So we'll grow from each other. Um, I'm looking forward to learning more about it myself. I mean, it's a huge resource and there's a lot that's changing and being added to it every day. The ING Unsung Hero Award was when I applied for to create a makerspace in the library or help create that. And so we are going to be able to purchase some hardware and some software and some robotics kits, 3D doodler pens. We already have a 3D printer, but the pen will make it more accessible to students to kind of draw in 3D their design and then we can draw it on the computer and print it off as well. So we have multiple options through that. It's going to be very exciting and it's pushing us in that direction of allowing the kids to have hands-on um, experiences with their learning. You know, it's, technology has definitely given us another layer to our understanding, but it's taken us away from some of that hands-on stuff that we did that made it more concrete for young kids especially. And I'm just really excited about it because as we're preparing students for college and career readiness, I don't want to leave out the trades and careers that are available to students. But I like the idea of them being able to go back to the trade and go use their hands and do things that way, explore it. And it actually opens up all of those career options for them, whether they're going to do something with their hands or something on a computer or something with books. It's all going to be possible through our makerspace um, environment. So I'm really excited that it, we're going to have that opportunity. I think maker spaces are important for education because it's allowing every kind of student to experience learning and share what they know. It also gives them an opportunity to work together in teams that are more real world. They're working on a real project when they come in to create something. It's just a very collaborative environment. 
it will allow me to bring in mentors to my school from the high schools and the colleges and the trades and professional groups in our, in our area. So I think it, it validates a lot of kids' interest. It makes it rigorous so that they're actually not just playing. There's a difference to me. There's an objective to what you're making. You're going to have to work with a team member to try to accomplish it and present it to the group. It's very rigorous, but it's, it's hard fun. They're enjoying it the whole time, so they're willing to work harder to make it work. All right, so hydrogen? Maybe it's not the next big trend. It's probably already happening. It definitely is already happening um, with flipped learning. But I see more and more self-paced um, directing your own learning through accessing videos, accessing people online, reading books on your own. And just So that's exciting to me as a librarian because that means I still have a very vital role to play. In this tutorial, you will learn how to use Animoto to create videos. This is I, I really do think that that's where it's going, even the, and it is a kind of a, a future thing for my age group, K through five. There hasn't been a lot of self-directed flipped learning, but I think it's coming because kids are showing that they're very interested in pursuing their own interest, and we need to kind of capitalize, I guess, on that motivation where they have it and let them explore and pick up the other needed skills as a result of that. Oh, my group built a cube. I guess my passion for learning and teaching just comes from my inner curiosity. I have always wanted to know, and so I want to help other people know. I love working with kids of all ages. Like I said, I work at the community college and in the K through five setting, and I find a lot of the same thrills with them because, you know, when you're on a journey to learn something, whether you're seven or seventeen or fifty-seven. It's, it can be frustrating if you don't know how to find it and so rewarding to sit down with somebody and, and be able to open doors for them and show them the way. And I've heard some librarians talk about being gatekeepers for information and I have never liked that term because I don't like the, what it implies that I'm holding things back. And I, you know, when I first got out of, of library school, I went to work at the Library of Congress, which was an amazing, wonderful experience for me. And they truly were gatekeepers. I mean, you, even as an employee there, could not go into certain stacks without permission slips. And that's, that's a control of access to, to protect the collection, not to be controlling. You know, that's just a special collection. But that's what it made me think okay. of as, you know, putting barriers when you call yourself a gatekeeper. I like to consider myself a gateway to information instead, that I just help you find the way to the information that you need. And it's always been whether I, I didn't start out in library work and I didn't stay in it all the, all the way when I first graduated, but it's always been the thing that I've kind of done when I got to a place where I was working is helping people find information and getting to the answers that they needed. So that's, that must be where my passion is and where it comes from, just a desire to, to see those light bulbs come up over people's heads.